Welcome again, everybody, to Training the Trainer, where to start when teaching JAWS. We thank you for joining us. It's a big crowd today. We're happy to see all of you here. Let's get started introducing uh, the presenter for today, Elizabeth Whitaker from Vespero. You'll not notice a new job title, Product Manager, User Education and Outreach. So congratulations on the change, the promotion. Let's talk about our learning objectives because we've got a lot of things we want to get through and help you learn today. Uh, so you're going to review three resources available uh, by Freedom Scientific for teaching JAWS. We'll identify two means of accessing the JAWS basic training material. We're going to review three keyboard commands used in FS Reader. If you don't know what FS Reader is, we'll let you know about that today as well. We'll review two ways to access the JAWS training modules. You'll learn what those are as well in case those are new to you. And we're going to review four steps for downloading the JAWS basic training bundle. There is a lot there, really helpful stuff. And if you're not familiar with it, uh, you will be in a short period of time. Let's talk about our challenges and things that may be things that you're dealing with. Sighted teachers, they're not you, they're used to navigating visually, interacting with a mouse, and teaching their students requires learning to navigate by sound and with the keyboard. And that is a challenge. Uh, switching from one to another is definitely a, a challenge for anybody, teacher or otherwise. Uh, if you're a JAWS user and you're teaching someone who's transitioning to JAWS, you may have trouble describing the interaction on the screen. I know I've, I've done this and you may know how to do something, but trying to tell somebody else how to do it can really be challenging. And as someone teaching JAWS, you may not be aware of all the training materials from Freedom Scientific. And it turns out a lot of folks are familiar, but a lot of folks are not. So uh, it's gonna be good to hear about these resources and see how to interact with them. And with that, Let's turn it over to Elizabeth to get us started. All right, thank you, Paul and Betsy Ann, and a big thank you to APH for having me here again, as always. And thank all of you for coming. So this is a very exciting topic. And before we delve into, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna to cover today, but I just wanna say there are two components to teaching JAWS. There's the learning aspect for those of you who may not be JAWS users. So people like myself who are JAWS users, you know, we kind of have that idea already going into it. Of course, you know, we still have to learn it as well. But, you know, we're operating JAWS, we're operating the computer as a JAWS user. For, for those of you who may not be doing that, just like Paul was saying, who you may be mouse users, and you think, well, how am I going to learn this myself, plus now teach my students, and where do I even know where to begin? How do I even know where to begin? So today, we're gonna start by just giving you an overview of using JAWS with some third-party applications and a summary of the training that we do offer. So you're gonna be getting a lot of links today. I am gonna do some demonstrations. And I just wanna say that, you know, one, we have a lot of different training, uh, training out there lot of different ways you can get content. And so you may find that one specific one works really well for you. You may find that a combination of them work well. And we do want your feedback. We wanna know what you, how you wanna receive your content. So we're gonna be talking about how you can send us that information as well. We're also gonna be talking about navigating the Freedom Scientific training page. This is the hub of where all of our training lives. You can find everything, every different resource on that page. We're going to talk about how to access the JAWS basic training material. That's the training that you uh, that you can install when you install JAWS. It's right there, you know, on your machine already. And we're going to talk about how to get to that training, how to navigate it. I'm going to demonstrate that for you. We're going to talk about downloading the JAWS basic training bundle and what that is and where you might use that accessing the training series on our teachers page. And I do want to go over that teachers page and show you the contents that content that's there, including the math page, because I think it's very important to know where those resources live. And then finally, I'm going to give you some tips 
on where you might start when teaching JAWS. All right, so let's talk about an overview of using JAWS with third-party applications. So when I say third-party applications, I'm talking about things like, you know, Microsoft Office, Google Workspace, you know, a lot of different applications that you use, Google Classroom, all these different resources, email applications like Outlook and web browser. So these are all what we call third party applications. Now you can read the text and navigate these applications using the keyboard. So you don't have to use the mouse. You can simulate all of those things that you would do with the mouse using the keyboard. And you can, again, as, as I just said in, you know, previously, you can access all of our training resources on the training page. And this is where you're going to find our upcoming webinars, our archived webinars on using JAWS with some of those third-party applications. And I think that's really where you can apply the knowledge that you learn from the basic training. I think it's really important to have a practical way of taking that information and then using it in something that you're going to do every day. And our training link or the link to our training page that that URL is freedomscientific.com forward slash training. So I'm going to be giving you a lot of different URLs today, but you know, if there's one that you remember, remember freedomscientific.com forward slash training. And we, Paul and, and Betsy Ann did mention the handouts earlier. All of this information is included in the handouts. So you will have that as a reference as well. So when we access the JAWS basic training, which we're gonna talk about here in just a minute, we use an application called FS Reader. And I'm gonna be talking more about that and how this training is arranged. And then the JAWS basic training bundle is the same information that you have in the JAWS basic training that we're gonna be talking about in FS Reader, but it is in a zip file so that you can download it, you can you know, install or you can save those files to your computer, you can save them to something like Dropbox or maybe Google Drive or something like that. And you can, you know, use them on your phone or your mobile device. So if you want to access the training on a device other than your computer, you can do that. And then finally, of course, we have our teachers page, which includes our JAWS training series, which I'm going to show you that we created specifically for teachers and also our math content and some other resources for typing and keyboarding and things like that. So with all of that, let's talk about navigating the training page. And here in just a second, I am going to share my screen. So once again, the Freedom Scientific training page can be found at freedomscientific.com forward slash training. Uh, you will find everything there pertaining to our training page, including our training events page, which will uh, show you our upcoming webinars, our archived webinars page or webinars on demand page as we call it and that's where you can stream or download previous webinars and so with all of that let's just let me go ahead and share my screen here and i am All right, I'm having a little bit of trouble sharing this here. So let me try this again. I am going to. Meeting can start screen share training the trainer training and dash freedom. There we go. All right. Training and dash freedom scientific. I hope you guys can hear the speech and see what's on the screen there. I have the training page up. So this page is categorized with each different training category here, and they're, they're all under headings. So for a JAWS user, what that means is we can navigate using the letter H as in hotel to navigate through each heading. If you're, if you're using the mouse, then you can find each heading and navigate that way. 
So I'm going to go ahead and press H here, and we're going to just talk about these different headings as we navigate them and show you what you will find here on the training page. Training center, let's learn something new. So there's our main heading. JAWS heading level two link. So right there, you heard it say JAWS and it said link. So it's a heading, but it's also a link. So if I were to press enter on this link, it would bring me to the JAWS page. And that's where we're gonna find the training bundle. We're gonna find keyboard commands. We're gonna find all kinds of things on that JAWS page. If we keep pressing H here, Fusion heading level two link. There, once again, this is a link, it would take you to the Fusion page. Um, all of these software pages have FAQs, all kinds of information on them, and information about where to get started learning these applications. So we have one for JAWS, Fusion, Zoom text heading level two link, uh, Zoom text, Braille hardware heading level two link. There's our Braille hardware page. So if you're looking for information on the focus displays, that's where you would go. Training events heading level three. Now this one isn't a link, it said training events. This is where you're going to find our upcoming webinars. I'm gonna down arrow here. See a schedule of upcoming webinars and sign up to attend for free. All right, so these are all free. And here's, you know, gives us a little bit of information here. Link training events. And then here we have a link. So if I press enter here, it's gonna take me off to this page where you will find our upcoming webinars. Training and dash freedom scientific and page from, has one frame, three regions, 12 headings, and 38 links. So it, JAWS gives you a lot of information there about the page, but if I press H. Upcoming webinars heading level one. There's our upcoming webinars heading. Navigating the web today, tips on accessing common web page elements with JAWS. And that was the webinar, actually, that's going to be archived this week, which is why it's not on the archive page yet, because it will be archived here within the next couple of days. Tips and tricks for a more enjoyable OCR experience heading level two. So from here, you can just keep pressing H and you have these webinar titles. You can press down arrow to read all the information about them. And then there is a register link, which will take you to the, the, the uh, Zoom registration page. All right, so now I will press alt left arrow to go back to the previous page, which is our main training page. Back, training and dash freedom scientific. And I should be right where I left off. So I'm going to press H again. Webinars on demand heading level three. And this is where you're going to find all of our archived webinars. So I can press down arrow and read about that. Miss the live training, download or stream a previous webinar and learn at your own pace. Visited link webinars on demand. So that would take us to the webinars on demand page. You're going to navigate it the same way. Each webinar is under its own header. And in, on this page, each webinar is a link, which will take you to the page for that webinar. And then you can either stream or download the MP3 or the MP4. And then there are also resource files, which are you know just like the handouts that we offer uh, for the APH webinars as well. So that's where you would go to find a previous webinar. Teaching resources heading level three. And there's the heading for our teaching resources. And again, if you down arrow, you'll get information about that. And there's a link to that page. Surf's Up heading level three. Surf's Up is our online tutorial for learning web navigation with JAWS. This is not a beginner. I wouldn't call this a beginner tutorial just because it's beginner to the web. But if you're new to JAWS, might not be where you want to start. And I'll explain why coming up here in just a couple of minutes. But if someone is ready to learn nav web navigation, this is where you can go. All kinds of practice pages here and you know, different categories, different topics, things like how to navigate tables, how to fill out forms, different web page elements. And we are constantly updating all of these pages. So you'll be seeing some new things here soon as well. Podcasts heading level three. This is a heading we're uh, talking about our training podcast. So here at Freedom Scientific, we have two podcasts. We have FSCast, which is hosted by Glenn Gordon. And you may, when you when JAWS starts, uh, you may see when there's a new FSCast available, you'll have a link there, um, or you can go to our FSCast page. You can type Freedom Scientific FSCast and you'll, you'll find that page and you can listen to the podcast. They're great. Glenn interviews all kinds of people. 
he talks to, you know, uh, people in all different professions, just a lot of interesting uh, information that you'll learn there. We also have our training podcast, which is previous training events. They're, these podcast episodes are taken from previous training events like webinars, some of our clubhouse events, things like that. And so you can listen to those podcasts on your phone. You can subscribe there. You can uh, listen even on your smart speaker. So you can say, play the Freedom Scientific Training podcast. and play the last episode, the, the most recent episode. Video tutorials heading level three. So there you'll find a link to some information about our video tutorials. We have videos on YouTube. We have Freedom Scientific Training as our YouTube channel. And then also on um, TikTok. So we have videos in both places. And these are typically smaller, more bite-sized trainings on specific topics. And some of them are taken from webinars. So for example, you know, if we were to create a, well, and actually there is a video on using FS Reader. So if you just want to learn about FS Reader, you can go there and you can find a video on one specific thing. And there you go. Certification heading level three. This is a heading uh, under here. You'll find information about the JAWS and ZoomText certifications. These are knowledge-based exams that you take. And when, when you pass them, you will get um, a certificate that says you are JAWS certified or you are ZoomText certified. And then for an extra cost, you can get a printed or embossed Braille certificate and you can get your name on on the list of certified individuals and so that's something that a lot of instructors like to do just so and they you know then you can renew that certification as JAWS is updated and that just keeps you updated and people see your name on that list and they know that you are JAWS certified that you're ZoomTech certified. Documentation heading level three. So here's some information about our documentation. Refer to current and legacy user guides and reference documents. So it's going to Link documentation. Give you links to some user guides. Math and JAWS heading level three. Here is a page for Math and JAWS. Use JAWS to read and study math problems using both speech and Braille. Link Math and JAWS. And we'll talk about that page here in just a little bit. Student of the Month heading level three. And then if you haven't heard about this program, the Student of the Month program, we choose a student every month. We feature a student who uses our Freedom Scientific products to achieve their educational goals. And so I'll show you where to go to nominate a student. Students can nominate themselves. All the information is there and we interview the students and they are featured in a video on our blog and they win a $500 Amazon gift card. Contact us heading level three. So that is our training page at a glance. So all of our resources are here. Great. And if you're wondering where to start with our online resources, this is where I recommend you can go because it's your jumping off point to every single thing that you might need. All right, so let's see if you guys have any Meeting questions can... about that before we move on to talk about the JAWS basic training. And we've got a poll question. Yes, we do. That's right. So this is that. a... It's a great time for you to enter those questions in the chat as you answer this poll. And the question is, which resources can you access on the Freedom Scientific training page? Uh, pick uh, any, all of these uh, that apply. JAWS training, Braille hardware training, training events, archived webinars, or all of the above. Which resources can you access on the Freedom Scientific Training page? Again, your choices are JAWS training, Braille hardware training, training events, archived webinars, or all of the above. And we're going to go back just slightly to answer a question that came in earlier. Uh, what operating systems does JAWS work on? Specifically, uh, we've got someone asking about the iPad. JAWS only works on Windows, so it, will, it won't work on the iOS operating system, but it will work on Windows. And if anyone out there is has just upgraded or is considering upgrading to Windows 11, it does work really well with Windows 11. Great. 
And I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. I, Just as a I reminder. I couldn't tell if that question was about using JAWS or using the training resources on the iPad. You can oh, use yeah. the training resources on the iPad, though, can you? Can you not? Yes. Yes, you should be able to do that. And you can also use, if you have a Braille display, if you have one of our folks displays, you can use that with your iPad as well. Great. Thanks for clarifying that, Paul. That's uh, yeah, a good thing you. to mention. Uh, the next question that's come in, I have a 2022 JAWS certification. Can a totally blind person qualify for a Zoom Tech certification? If so, how hard is it to achieve with keystrokes? Uh, the answer to that is absolutely. Um, you can. And I think the key is having, you know, the software, practicing with the software, learning, you know, going through the information. And because it is still very keyboard driven. And so, um, you know, and you can still learn about the visual aspects, even if you are unable to see them, because I myself do come from a background of, of actually teaching a Zoom text in the past. And so, you know, as long as you can learn what the different features are and, you know, and, and work with students that way, you can definitely teach it and you can definitely get certified there. Great. And because we have such a large group with us today, we won't be able to take any raised hands. So please do use the chat to place any questions. All right. Uh, we're just about ready to look at our uh, poll results, but we just got a few more uh, questions coming in. So okay. uh, this question is, is it easy for a blind person to be certified? Um, just if you want to clarify in the chat, if you mean in JAWS or a different program that uh, Freedom Scientific also uh, creates, let us know. But we can answer that question for JAWS. Yeah, absolutely. Talking about JAWS, the answer is absolutely yes. You, as long as you're willing to put the time and the study in, I'm certified. Yep, Obviously, Liz too. is certified. So you can do it. Yep. And the thing is, you can take the test as many times as you want. All right, and we had a um, oh, couple more questions coming in. Um, will JAWS work with a Bluetooth keyboard using the iPad? No, because it won't work on the iPad. It's not for that operating system. So if you're using JAWS, you have to be running JAWS on a Windows uh, operating system. But it will work with a Bluetooth keyboard on a computer. All right, thanks for, for clarifying that. Uh, we've got a few more questions that have come in. I am going to save those uh, for a, a later moment. We can start off our next um, question period with the, the questions that have just come in. But let's take a look All at right. the poll questions. Uh, which resources can you access on the Freedom Scientific training page? Uh, lots of responses. This was a multiple choice. So you could select all that apply. Um, Lots of responses, but the greatest response by far at 87% was all of the above. Elizabeth, what was the correct response? That's it. All right. We didn't, we didn't trip up most of you. <laughs> nope. Very good. All right. We are going to go along to our next page with it, which is access the JAWS basic training material. All right. So the JAWS training material, when you install JAWS, you have the option of installing it. And if you don't install it, you can still do so. And I'm going to show you how to get to it. You can get to it from the JAWS help menu under training. And that will open FS Reader, which is our DAISY book reader. So if you're familiar with DAISY books, DAISY stands for Digital Accessible Information System. And it's an international standard that was put in place years ago for making books easier to navigate so that you can navigate by chapter, uh, page, things like that. You can mark your place. The other great thing about DAISY is that you can sync content. So if you have audio and you have text content, you can sync them so that if you're listening to the audio, for example, and you want to see how a word is spelled, you can jump straight to the text and it will be in that same place where your audio was and vice versa. So you can jump back and forth and navigate those. So we have FS Reader, which you can read Daisy books uh, using FS Reader. 
But our basic training has also been created in DAISY format. So that'll make it easier to play and pause, to go back and read, listen, you know, and all of the, all of the above, all the things I just said. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And let me just go ahead and start sharing my screen now because okay. I'm just going to show you how this works. All right, let's. Okay, so if you have JAWS set to, if, if you have the JAWS window, which I have mine set to run in the system tray, so I don't have a separate window for JAWS. But if you press insert J, you're going to get one of two things. It's either going to say JAWS and it's going to focus is going to be placed in that window, or it's going to say context menu, in which case that means it's running from the system tray. Either way, you're going to press insert J. Uh, you can then press alt H for help and go down to training. Or in this case, I'm going to press insert J. JAWS context menu. And I'm going to press H for help. H command search insert plus space. So there's a lot here in this help uh, menu, which I'm just going to kind of briefly show you because I do want to show you a couple things. And then we're going to move on to training. Training. There's training. JAWS help topics. There you have some JAWS help topics. Keyboard commands. Commands. What's new? Information about what's new. Technical support. There's a tech support information. So if you need some help with something, that's where you can go to get the information on how to contact them. Web resources sub menu. There's web resources. That's going to take you to the training page, the surf sub resources, things like that. About JAWS dot dot dot. Startup wizard dot dot dot. F Startup wizard is where you go to um, change the different settings so you can customize JAWS the way that you want to. And it runs when you first install JAWS, but then you can also go back to it and further customize things. FS support tool dot dot dot. License sub menu. Check for updates dot dot dot. That's where you'd want to go to check for updates. I just wanted to point that out. Command search insert plus. And there's where you can go to search for specific commands. So training. you just have a lot of information here. You have training. And if you press enter here, it's going to open up Leaving menus, meeting controls, FS reader untitled, tree view opened, one item, JAWS. So it opens up a tree view, and here we have all of the different training topics. The JAWS basic training was completely over to the narrate. So I can navigate between these two things by pressing F6. This is the, the text. F6, tree view, JAWS basic training, daisy books open. And now it says a tree view, which means I can down arrow here. Level three, book one, introduction and overview of the JAWS basic training, one of nine. So there's an, an introduction and overview. Book two, getting started with JAWS. There's a getting started book. Book three, working with menus, dialog boxes, and the JAWS startup wizard. So there's where you can go to learn how to work with menus and dialog boxes, because we certainly use a lot of those, don't we? Book four, the JAWS user interface and utilities. There's, you know, utilities. So we just have a lot of information here. We, we have a book on getting help. We have a book on reading, navigating and reading text. So no matter where you are here, if you're on one of these books. Book five, introduction to Microsoft Windows. Book six, using the keyboard to read and edit text. So there we go, using the keyboard to read and edit text. If I press F6, it's gonna take me over here to the text part of this book. F6. Book six, using the keyboard to read and edit text heading level three. All right. Now, if I wanted to hear the audio from either place, I could press control P. Book six, using the keyboard to read and edit text. And I can press control P again to pause or control S to stop. Um, and then if I move anywhere in this book. And book commands as selecting the total time to listen to book six is 48 minutes, 39 seconds. So now if I press control P. The total time to listen to book six is 48 minutes, 39 seconds. So you notice how it syncs with uh, the text there. So if I were to keep listening. Description, column. start time, viewing time. Allow the viewing time. And the text is in the same exact place. That's how Daisy books work and that's how these are structured. All right, so once again, when you're in FS Reader and you're here in these books, you can press F6 to navigate back and forth from your categories, uh, so to speak, or your different books. F6, tree view, book six. Use your down arrow, up and down arrow keys to navigate to the book you want. And if you press enter on one, for example. 
viewing time allow to complete. It's going to start reading or, or start playing the audio for that book again. But if you press F6 again, it takes you to the text area. F6. Six one news allow to complete. And actually, I think it already took me there. F6, three view. Yeah, it did. So allow to complete. Now, when I pressed enter. Book seven. Oh, it did not. Okay. Book six. So I could press F6. F6, book six, using the keyboard to read a deck. So you just press F6 to navigate back and forth between the books. And you press, you know, you can press enter to start listening, or you can press control P. The great thing about this too is, let's say you're in Microsoft Word and you're practicing this and you're navigating text you can use control P just to pause, to play and pause that content. And as long as you're using FS Reader, you know, control P is normally the uh, keyboard command for printing a document in Word. But in this case, we've overridden that so that you can you play and pause that content while you're in another application. That makes it easy. You don't have to keep switching back to FS Reader. Okay, let me close this and show you another way to access this. And I wanna show you something that a lot happens for a lot of people and how to resolve that. So I'm gonna press Alt F4. Alt F4, meeting controls. And I'm gonna to go to my desktop and I'm just gonna run FS Reader from the desktop. Windows M, desktop F, FS Reader 3.0. So I pressed enter. FS Reader untitled. So right now, blank, blank. you know, you might open FS Reader and you think, well, I'm, not, I'm arrowing, there's nothing here. Blank, what, blank. what do I do? From here, if you press Control J, it's going to load your books. Control J, book six, using the keyboard to read and edit text book. Notice it took me right back to where I was. So now we have the list of books. Control J, load your table of contents. And book six of the base. And here I am in the text of book six. I can press F6. F6, three view, book seven. And I can navigate that way. So just as a reminder, Control J, load your table of contents when you're in FS Reader. F6 takes you back and forth between the uh, list of books, that tree view, and your text. And then Control P will play or pause. Control S will stop. That stops the audio. And those are some of the main keyboard commands that you need when you're working in FS Reader. I'm going to Alt F4. Alt F4. Zoom. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen and see if you guys have any questions about that. I think we have a poll question, don't we? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I we've got tons okay. of questions that have come in. Okay. So let me get our PowerPoint back up. And All here right. we are and on our poll question. We'll get to this poll question. And this is a true or false question. The JAWS basic training bundle contains all materials in MP3 and HTML format. True or false? Uh-oh, I think we might have jumped. I think that one, because we haven't talked about that one yet. All right. Um, well, let us pull back that poll. We're going to end about it. that. Don't worry. We've got another question. Um, so we, we might just not have a poll question at this point. We might oh, have we jumped ahead okay. too much. Um, yeah, we may be a little ahead because the that next might be one my is fault definitely <laughs> later. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go back and answer some of the questions. Sorry about that. That we missed. We did have a few questions and comments about, uh, the student of the month. So uh, first off, a comment. Uh, the FS Student of the Month also receives a free computer from Computers for the Blind. So that's another benefit of uh, submitting your student for Student of the Month. And we did have a question. Can yes. only schools nominate for Student of the Month, i.e. can a state agency or community organization nominate someone? No, you can, as a teacher, you can nominate your student, as a parent, as a friend, um, you know, if you know of a student, is, is a student can nominate themselves. Great. So, so yeah, uh, any any kind of organization could mm -hmm. yes nominate a student. Thank you. Yep. For that. And we are going to talk about and yeah, thank you for reminding me about yes, the, the computer from Computers for the Blind. The student will also receive that computer with the software that they need, whether it's JAWS or ZoomText. Excellent. 
All right, so I'm going backwards just a little bit. We had a question come in. My JAWS with Excel 2013 on my new laptop is slow, lagging, and takes a long time to speak. Uh, any advice for that, uh, that audience member? Uh, I do not have access to 2013, so I'm not really sure. I would say uh, maybe call support on that. Maybe reach out to support at vispero.com on that. They may have some insights for you. Um, yeah, I don't. I can't actually test that one. Yeah, yeah that it might, may just be that if you're may. using a newer JAWS version, that you need to see if it's possible to upgrade your Excel because the newer JAWS versions are going to work better with the newer versions of of those software programs. Right, and if you have a, an Office 365 subscription, you're going to get the latest versions of Office as they are released and you you know you may not experience uh, you shouldn't experience that lag time then if you're able to upgrade absolutely all right next question um what is the difference between jaws and voiceover so jaws is the jaws is a screen reader for windows voiceover is a screen reader for the Mac operating system and iOS operating system. So they both, you know, pretty much perform the same functionality on, but they have different features and, you know, depending on, you know, one company to the other, but the operating systems are very different. And um, so one, you know, will not work on the other. And uh, one more uh, question about student of the month. I think you're going to uh -huh. have an influx of students oh, be great. being recommended for this program after yeah. this webinar, uh, since it seems like we got a lot of interest in it. Is student of the month available only for U.S. for students in the United States, or is it available internationally? It is only at this time available for students in the United States. And all the details, I'll show you the student of the month page where you can read more about those details, and you can always email us with questions. Great. So again, I've, I'm taking down all of our questions to make sure that we get to everything and we yeah. don't miss something. But we had a few questions ab um, about some of the keystrokes you were you were okay. doing. Sure. So first off, um, is there an ability to search within the training materials for certain text, like if you wanted to look up a certain topic? Um, I would hope that the standard Charles search queue commands would work, but I wasn't sure. Um, and also, can you put a bookmark in these files? Um, there are ways to mark where you are. I, uh, I'm not sure about that. Now, if you're in FS Reader and you have a book open, you can search that text. You can do the find command um, and search that text. And you could use control insert F to do that. or if you're in the table of contents, it's going to break everything down by topic. So that, you know, kind of makes it a little bit easier to search for specific things. Now, if you're searching for a command, you can use the command search with insert space followed by J. And then you can type in the command that you're looking for. And then you'll get a list of, of different command, JAWS commands. All right, and then also wanted to, we had someone who requested that they wanted to see how you pause the speech when reading a DAISY file. So when you're reading a DAISY file, you can just press control P. That is the keyboard command for play and for pause. You just press it again when you want to pause and it will pause right where you are. And then when you press control P, it will start right playing right at that spot again. Or if you have navigated somewhere else within the text of a book, it will uh, start playing at that point. Great. And we're going to do one final question. Again, I've got all of your questions saved. Um, does FS Reader have a pass through key? Um, I'm not exact. I, I know what it has. I know what you mean by a pass through key, but I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. If you're asking, um, one thing as far as playing and pause, 
with the control P. So if you have FS Reader open, and then for example, let's say you're in Word and you are practicing what you're learning in FS Reader and you press control P, whereas normally it would activate the print command in Word, you uh, FS Reader will keep that from happening because it's, since it's open, when you press control P, it's going to play and pause in FS Reader instead. So I'm not sure if that's what you were referring to, but if if not, please go, you know, feel free to clarify there. All right, well, Elizabeth, I'm going to hand it back to you just to make sure we get through all our content. I've saved these questions and we can review the next time we, we take a break for a poll question. Yeah, sorry about that. That was my mistake there on the poll question. I got a little bit excited because I usually miss those. All right. So now we're going to talk about the JAWS basic training bundle. So this training bundle is everything that's here in the JAWS basic training, except it's not in DAISY format. It's in the it's in MP3 format and HTML. So these are not going to sync up. You have two separate files that you can look at. You can read. You can read the HTML files with JAWS or on another device, you can listen to the MP3 files on your computer or another device. And we put this together because we were getting a lot of questions from people who wanted to know how to listen to our content on you know, a device other than the computer. And then you know, maybe people are in certain situations where they can't access the JAWS basic training. They just wanna be able to download it for example, with trainers who just want to be able to download it all at once and give it to their students, you can do that. So I'm going to show you where to go um, to do that. Let me share my screen here. Let's try this again. Available. All right. Start screen training the trainer at training and dash freedom. So I'm here on the training page. Training and dash freedom scientific. And I'm going to press H to navigate to the JAWS heading. Training center, let's learn something new. JAWS heading level two link. And I'm going to press enter to go to our JAWS training page. JAWS heading level two link. Heading level one JAWS training. JAWS. And from here, I can press the letter H again to navigate through these different headings. Getting started with JAWS heading level two. So here's a heading for getting started with JAWS. Just installed your brand new copy of JAWS on your Windows computer. So this is going to help you get started. This training is available for download in DAISY Digital. And that's talking about the JAWS basic training that we just you know went through in DAISY format. JAWS training bundle heading level two. And the JAWS training bundle here is where you're going to be able to download this JAWS training bundle. And I'm going to down arrow here. You can also download the complete link JAWS basic training as a zip file that you can extract to any location on your computer. It contains the entire basic training in MP3 and HTML format so you can listen or read at your convenience. So if you wanted to download that, you'd go back up here. As link JAWS basic training. It says link JAWS basic training. If you press enter, it'll download that. I'm not going to do that now because it takes a little bit of time. And when you download that, it'll go to wherever you have your downloads set to. Uh, for example, I have mine to go to downloads. And it's, it's going to be a zip file. So you press enter on it or you click it and it's going to open up. It's going to be you're going to have a folder there and then you'll have one folder for your HTML files and one folder for your audio and so you get to choose and within those folders each file will be a book so um actually let me just go to my downloads and show you that Search. i'm going to o -L -D -C downloads file folder C user. so i'm gonna have to go down quite a bit J2, here J2, Windev, J jaws basic training one dot zip there we go so JAWS basic training, mine said one, probably because I downloaded it a couple times, not meaning to. So I'm going to press enter on it. See users UE taker. And here it opens up this zip file. JAWS basic training. And we have a folder called JAWS basic training. I could copy this folder to an SD card. I could copy that to Dropbox or Google Drive or OneDrive or any of those places. And then I could extract these files wherever I wanted. If I press enter here on this folder, See users, you take. 
It's going to open that folder. Text, uh, text HTML. So here I have audio MP3, one of two. Two folders. One is audio MP3. Text HTML. Text HTML. And if I were to press enter, let's say, let's go back up here to audio. Audio MP3, one of two. I'll enter. Shell folder view. And now I have files. 0201 introduction JAWS basic training dot MP3. So this is an MP3 of the entire first JAWS basic training book, the introduction book. 02 getting started with JAWS dot MP3. And so that's the second one and so forth. So each of these files is a JAWS basic training book. The same thing that you would see in the DAISY books that when FS Reader that we were just in. So that is how you download the basic training bundle. Now, I did want to mention one thing I forgot to say when we were talking about those uh, books that you will find in FS Reader. So if you go to FS Reader and you haven't downloaded any of those books, they will show up in your table of contents. And when you press enter, they, that book will download if it's not already downloaded. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. But here on the... Uh, so you just go to the training page to find the training bundle and you go to the JAWS page, the JAWS training page, and then you locate training bundle and you press enter on the link and that will download that entire zip file to your computer. JAWS meeting control. So I'm going to stop sharing. Now we have a poll question. All right. Yeah, that does seem to fit a whole lot better in this spot yes. here. So, all right, here we go. Uh, true or false, the JAWS basic training bundle contains all materials in MP3 and HTML format. True or false? All right, I'm relaunching the poll. So if you had already filled out your answer, you will need to fill it out again if you'd like to participate in the poll. So, oof, Elizabeth, so many questions coming in. All right. So let me get over to my question screen. I apologize. Oops, sorry. I'm trying to juggle multiple things uh, at one time. So great. OK. All right, so we're going to move back a little bit and see what we might have missed the last time. So number one, uh, can JAWS be used by folks who live outside of the United States? Absolutely. We do have a lot of international JAWS users. Great. Looking back at the uh, the DAISY books conversation, are the DAISY books here the same as the tutorials that are offered in audio format or text? Uh, I would say probably. I think that's what you're referring to. The tutorials, if you're referring to the tutorials under training, then yes. When would a student use FS Reader versus JAWS? Well, FS Reader is what is the tool that you're using or the application that you're using to access the training material. So FS Reader is a daisy book reader. It's it JAWS will verbalize the text when you're reading a book or reading, you know, one of the help or the training topics in FS Reader. JAWS will verbalize that, but JAWS is the screen reader. FS Reader is the DAISY book reader that you're using to access the training material. Great, thanks for clarifying that. Um, um, for the uh, commenter who said they were having issues accessing our handouts at APH, um, please use this new link that I'm gonna drop in the chat again um, and see if you can get to the handouts without a broken link. Um, not sure why you're experiencing that, but it, it might be something uh, within the link that you saved. Um, other questions about the training that um, Freedom Scientific provides. Is there a list of beginner commands, intermediate and advanced commands to go by? Or potentially this could be listed as elementary, middle and high school levels for teachers? That's an interesting thing to consider. Yeah, we don't actually have it broken down into that as of yet, but as you work through lessons, there will be 
keyboard commands for those different lessons. And so the ones that are, you know, maybe more beginner are going to have the keyboard commands for those tasks and then so forth. But that's an interesting concept. That's something that I would like to um, explore. Maybe, you know, depending on the task, I would say, um, and we'll, we'll get to this when we get to the, the tips, but, you know, I would say navigational commands are really important to learn first. You, first of all, you have to be able to type. Um, and there are you know, different resources for students who don't have those skills yet, who need those skills. And then once you learn the keys on the keyboard, then you have command over your keyboard and you can start reading and navigating around. And then you get into some of the more advanced keyboard commands like JAWS commands like insert T for reading a window title or even some Windows commands like control O to open a file, things like that. Yeah, so there have been a couple of uh, folks who were requesting lesson plans, if that's something that Freedom Scientific, the training page, would be interested in offering a specific lesson plans for elementary, middle, high school students, or could be differentiated as beginner, advanced, um, or beginner, intermediate, and advanced users. Right, that's a great idea. Uh, I like that feedback very much, yes. And we're having like a really um, involved uh, discussion in the chat about teaching typing to students. Um, we can obviously recommend both APH Talking Typer, which is a paid program, but we also have Typer Online, which is free. And I can drop that link into the chat um, at another time um, so that you guys have access to that. But before we uh, move on and share the results of this poll, we'll do one more question. Uh, so uh, this commenter is talking about uh, the availability of DAISY files on the training page. Is there a way to listen to your training materials uh, and tutorials on the Amazon Echo? I thought you could listen to your FS podcast, but I wasn't sure if the other Amazon Echo and Google Home also could um, do some of the training programs as well. We don't currently have the basic training available in on our podcast. So we don't, you know, that's not something that you can do on your home speaker at this time. But you could save these onto an SD card with this training bundle. You could save it on an SD card and you could use a digital book player for that. Or you could even, you know, if you save it to something like Dropbox or Google Drive and you access that with your phone or your iPad or, your, you know, with any other tablet, you could listen to them there as well. All right. Well, thank you. Again, lots of other stuff coming in in the chat. I'll do my best to filter out the questions. Um, but let's review our poll. So the question was true or false. The JAWS basic training bundle contains all materials in MP3 and HTML format. 97% said true, 3% said false. What was the correct response, Elizabeth? True. All right. And for those of you who are having issues with the chat, with getting links from the chat, Paul, do you have any advice for folks who are having issues getting links out of the chat? Sometimes, um, well, there's a couple of ways. You can, of course, just navigate with your arrow keys and select, or you can virtualize the window. Unfortunately, I can't remember the keystroke to do that. Um, Insert shift V. Yeah, okay. Do that. Um, now or at the end of the chat and then everything is saved um, and you could take links out copy and paste those whatever you need to do that's the easiest way for me is to virtualize the window and then um, go through and find it there may be another way that zoom offers but i you know that there's a there's another idea coming in the chat that i've partially heard but i if I virtualize the window, it's it's always been the uh, simplest way for me to do it. Yeah, so one of the responses that in the chat was to Alt H for the chat, tab to chat dialog, use your up and down arrows on the chat. And when, when you encounter a link, uh, you can tab to it to open it. And then another user commented, I use the speech history, insert plus space, and then the letter H. 
So thank you guys. And Elizabeth, I'm going to hand it back to you. Sure. All right. So we're going to talk about this teacher page now that we've created. You can visit the teachers page at freedomscientific.com forward slash training. And we're just going to go there and I'm going to show you our JAWS training series that we created. And let me get back over here where I can actually share my screen. All right. Meeting. Training and dash freedom scientific. Okay. Edit. So I'm here on the training page and I'm just going to go ahead and use JAWS find training and dash. to look for the word teachers. Virtual find. T E A C A E R. Access training resources. Head access training resources for teachers and assistive technology instructors. Link teaching resources. And there is teaching resources. So if I press enter here. Teaching resources link. Teaching resources and that teaching. So now it takes me to the teachers page. And again, we can just navigate this as a JAWS user with the letter H. Training modules heading level two. So here we have our training modules. Now we've set these up so that they have a lot of, they're very interactive. So these are for teachers. You can use them, of course, if you are totally blind because all of our videos are very uh, self-described. But we have lessons here. So we have 10 modules. Each module contains lessons. Each lesson contains a combination of text. Of course, that's the lesson text of videos, of links, of examples, of things like that. So for example, let's just press down arrow here and see what we got. We can access the table of contents, which is going to show us all of the modules and lessons. And you can jump to a specific module. You can jump to a specific lesson in that module. Or our training here and a multitude of free resources. Each month, a new training module is published. And so we here, we had, you know, we did the series over several months, like I think it was 10 different months um, that we post a module each month. Jump to a specific lesson or start at the beginning by opening the link table of contents. So there's a link to the table of contents, which we're going to do here in a second, but I want to show you how to navigate. Link module one. So this is module one. And if I were to press enter, it would take me right to that module. Learn how to list of five items. But this right here on this page, it tells you what you're going to learn in each module. Bullet navigate the Freedom Scientific Online Training Center. So there you're going to learn about navigating our training center. Bullet access JAWS training in DAISY format. Accessing the DAISY format, which is the JAWS basic training in FS Reader. Bullet access the Freedom Scientific Online webinars and recorded archives. So again, you just go down through here. It's going to tell you what you're going to learn. You can move to the next module. I'm The keyword command I'm using right now is U for unvisited link. So the letter U as in uniform will take me to the next unvisited link. You can just keep pressing down arrow as well, or you can um, go to your links list, which is insert F7, and then press the letter M, and you could go through module one, module two, and so forth, and enter on the one that you want. Link module two, creating a shortcut key, starting JAWS, and creating or renaming folders. So each of these modules has lessons, and then at the very end of each module, there is a short quiz that you know, it's just fun to test your knowledge there. And you can go back through these as many times as you want. You can take that quiz as many times as you want and so forth. So that's module two, module three. Link module three, using FS Reader and the JAWS basic training. So that's going to teach you how to use FS Reader. Link module four, reading and editing with JAWS. That's going to work on, you know, start with reading and editing. Link module five. Quickly get help in JAWS. That's going to show you all the different ways you can get help in JAWS. And there are several. And these are really, really important because, you know, as you're working through different topics, as you're working on tasks, you may need help. And so that will show you how to get help. Link module six, use popular tools in JAWS. That's just goes over some of the popular applications that are used and how to use them with JAWS. Things like the Kindle, um, Zoom, things like that. Link module seven, using Surf's Up as a teaching tool. This is going to go into using Surf's Up and how you can start teaching your students web navigation. Link module eight, JAWS and Braille. JAWS and Braille, connecting your displays, things like that. Link module nine, 
JAWS Dictionary Manager. This is a fun one because the JAWS Dictionary Manager allows you to determine how JAWS pronounces certain words. So if it says a word incorrectly, you can go in to the Dictionary Manager and you can type in the word that it's not pronouncing the way you want it to. You can then tell it how you want it to pronounce that word. And from there on out, it will pronounce it correctly uh, as long as you're using, you know, as long as you haven't reinstalled JAWS or something like that. Link module 10, Windows Ease of Access Center. And this last module just kind of goes over the Ease of Access Center, some of those tools that you'll find in there. Um, so those are the 10 modules. Now let's go back up to this table of contents. I'm going to do that with insert F7 to bring up my list of links. Links list dialog. And press T. T. Tipio from accessi by T. Talking to T. Type ability for T. Talking to T. TPG. And here we have... Um, one of the things that we talk about in our first module is these typing tutorials and of course the ones from APH are listed there as well and just different options that you would have where your students you know if you use the typing tutorial it's a great tool for students to learn it's a way for them to start um, you know applying that those keyboarding skills to something practically so we definitely uh, wanted to make sure that you had the resources to know how to find that if you if your students do need keyboarding. T training modules for T type in resource T table of contents. There we go. Table of contents. I pressed enter. Page has 12 headings a table. And so here we have the table of contents. Blank. Heading level one table of contents. Heading level two JAWS training for teachers and an separator. Link JAWS keystroke reference. Here we have a JAWS keystroke reference. So that's going to list a bunch of different, all the different keystrokes here. Heading level three module one. Introduction to teaching JAWS. So here, it, the way the table of contents is laid out, we have a heading for each module. And then if you down arrow. Link introduction. Lesson 1.1. One. There's your first lesson. Link find resources. And so forth. And so let's go to module two here. Module two, link, link options for starting JAWS. So here we have options for starting JAWS. And if you go here, if I'm going to press enter. Table of contents. Then you have the lesson, any videos associated with it. And at the bottom you have. Link next. A next. Link previous. And a previous link, which will take you to the next lesson or previous lesson. So. That's just that's how you use the uh, training content on the teacher's page. And I'm going to go back, 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 table of con and show you some more things on the teacher's page link really quickly. Visited link options for starting job back. Uh, let's see. Teaching okay, it opened it up in a separate tab. So now I'm back in the teaching. Just visited link table tab here. I can keep pressing H. I'm back on the teacher's page. Accessing math content with JAWS and Fusion heading level two. So this math page is going to contain information about how to use the math editor, um, how to insert equations, how to use the Desmos graphing calculator, which is a third party application that's accessible. We have some tutorials that one of our previous students of the month, uh, Campbell, has done for us, her and Professor Betsy downloadable resources so a lot of information here and then also um let's see let's go back, back. training and i want to show our student of the month page surf up at podcasts video tutorial certification at documentation math and jaws student of the month heading level three recognize a link student of the month all right so if you go to the link here for student of the month this is on our training page or you can just go to freedomscientific.com forward slash student of the month. Student of the month link, heading level 1K. So here is where you'll find all the information about how to nominate a student. There's a nomination form. There are uh, consent forms for students who are under 18 years of age that must be filled out by a guardian, parent or guardian. And then uh, information about what the students win, the $500 Amazon gift card, the computer for, from Computers for the Blind. All of that information is here as well. And you can also access those videos uh, to you know, watch the videos for previous students. And we also blog about this at blog.freedomscientific.com. So at the end of every month, we post a video and a blog post on a student. All right, so I just threw a whole lot of information at you. Meeting Let's control. see what other questions All you best. have before giving you a few of those tips. 
that you can use when starting to teach JAWS. All right. Um, let's get back to those questions and see where we left off and where okay. we can go from. Okay. Um, one question that's come up a few times is while we're talking about JAWS today, are similar resources available for Zoom text? We do have a lot of resources for Zoom text, and this is something that we're continuing to build out. Um, same thing, you know, with Fusion, which for those of you who are not familiar, Fusion is a uh, it's the JAWS and Zoom text together. So you can either use them both together you in one interface or you can use them separately and you know it's a great option in many situations especially if you have students who are transitioning or need that extra speech so we are always building out our training content right uh we did get a comment in the chat saying that uh the training that they downloaded just didn't start with navigational commands is there a training that does start with navigational commands that can be used with working with first-time jaws users the training that you downloaded if you're if you're talking about the training bundle or maybe the jaws basic training the jaws basic training starts with an introduction to jaws and some information that is valuable as far as like how to start JAWS, whether you start it on logon, after logon, things like that. And so that's why the navigation commands don't come first. But if you're not, uh, you know, if you if you need to start with the navigation uh, commands, you can go to that particular book that talks about navigating and editing text. Great, hopefully that helps um, that individual in the chat who might be having some difficulty. Yeah. Um, you can always reach out to us too. We're always you know, available to answer questions and we always welcome your feedback and we can always help you, you know, figure out where to start there. So send us an email to training at vispero.com and we'll give that to you again at the end. Great. Um, this is a, a, a new question that's come in. Can JAWS work on keyboards and operating systems that have been set to use different languages other than English? So in Windows, uh, because JAWS is, you know, for this is a screen reader for Windows operating system, you can use different languages. And there are a lot of different settings there. If you go to uh, utilities, let's see if you go to the utilities menu. No, wait, I'm sorry, languages uh, sub menu. So if you go to your JAWS window, if you press insert J and you can, you can go to your menu bar and there's the languages sub menu. And if you have those installed, then JAWS will work with those other languages. All right. Oh. We just got a new message coming in. Let me scroll down to it. Uh, has anyone created a list or documented an order to how to introduce JAWS to younger students to gradually build up their exposure, experience, and expertise? Um, that isn't something per se that we've done, but we've kind of done that with these teaching, uh, with these the JAWS series on our teaching page because. We started by, you know, providing the resources so that the teachers know where to go to get the information. And we kind of eased into, you know, the things that you would need to know when you're starting JAWS and then the navigation. Now, what you might be referring to is actually what I'm going to be covering here in the tips in just a few minutes of kind of where do you start and how do you introduce students to JAWS gradually? And I will be talking about that. All right, and uh, just we'll do one more question before we move on. Is there an easy way to switch quickly between languages? For example, when emails are in different languages, depending on the sender. So JAWS will recognize those different languages. And um, if you want more information on that, send us an email to training at vispero.com and we can walk you through some of those settings. But JAWS, you can set it where it will uh, recognize the different languages. So for example, if you open an email or a document, or if you're in a Word 
a, a web page and you encounter that different language, JAWS will switch and read in that language. All right, we can keep going uh, with the presentation. We've got about 15 minutes left, so I just want to make okay. sure we're doing well on time. Right. Okay, so let's talk about where to start with your students. And this is going to vary from one student to another, but here are some ideas that you might try. So if you're working with a student who is you know, very, very much a JAWS beginner who's never worked with synthesized speech before. One of the things I like to do is open a document and let them listen to synthesized speech because it is very different than listening to human speech. You know, we can, we can, we speak differently. It sounds differently. The inflections are different. So I think just getting used to that synthesized speech and then sometimes introducing them to different speech synthesizers. So one of the things you can do in JAWS is go in and you can change, you know, do I want the eloquence voice? Do I want Ava? Do I want Allison? You have a lot of different options there. So I think, you know, maybe finding that voice that they like to hear, the voice that is easiest to understand, and that helps. And before long, you know, the student will be able to speed the rate, you know, speed up the rate of speech and we'll be listening to things pretty quickly. But I think sometimes it helps to start in a document, maybe let them listen to a story because, you know, that's something that might interest them, whatever would interest the student, whether it's a story, an article, you know, some information. Um, you know, you can even have it speak on a web page. The web page is not where I would start with a beginner teaching them. You know, it might not be a bad idea to have JAWS read a web page. So this is also a great way to practice those reading and navigation commands. This is where you can really start introducing students to those ideas. Of, you know, of course, if they don't, if they're not able to type, then that's where you want to start. You want to, them to be able to type. They need to be able to find keys quickly. Things like the shift key, the control key. Those are what we call modifier keys. The insert key, because that is oftentimes and by default the JAWS key. So you'll hear it referred to as the JAWS key where you can use it for keyboard commands like insert T to read a window title, things like that. So they need to be able to find those keys. And once they can, they, you know, navigating again, just reading a document, navigating in that document, understanding how to go from line to line with your up and down arrows, word to word, you know, with control right arrow, control left arrow, for example, things like that. And of course, you know, use tasks that interest students to introduce new concepts. So if you want students to, for example, you know, start typing and writing and navigating and editing, if you're trying to teach them how to edit a document, then maybe have them write a story or a blog post or an article, whatever interests them. And then each lesson that you go through, whether it's navigation, uh, whether it's you know, how to get help in JAWS, try to apply that to a practical task. So one thing I like to do, for example, and this is just one example of how you can do that. You know, if, if you're in, say, a Word document and you want to get, you know, you want to get help in JAWS, or let's say you're on that lesson where, you know, you want to know how to get help in JAWS, one of the commands for that is insert F1. And so if I press insert F1, I'm in a Word doc, it's going to tell me this is a document window. It's going to tell me some of the things that are present in this window. Just like if you're on a web page, it's going to tell you whether how many links you have, headings, things like that. So just applying this to wherever the student is, whether it's in a document, whether it is on a web page, maybe they are ready for web you know, navigation. Have them research something that interests them. Have them message other students, you know, send emails, things like that. Whatever applications you're using, whatever interests your students, apply those things to those applications. For example, navigating, you know, if you're using, say, Google Drive or Google Classroom, maybe showing them how to navigate to different files using their arrow keys. So you can apply that to, you know, yes, your arrow keys can be used, your up and down arrow keys, you can use those to read line by line, but you can also use them 
to navigate in a menu line by line. So those are just a few tips. And, and again, it's gonna depend on where the student is, but I would say as long as the student has a good command of the keyboard, then you know, really kind of start with those navigation, the reading commands, and you know, and work work from there. All right, let's I think we do have a poll question. We certainly do. <laughs> okay, this is the last one. And we have three choices here. And what are some ways to engage teaching students when teaching JAWS? Practice reading and navigation commands in a Word document. Use practical tasks that interest students or all of the above. Ways to engage teaching students when teaching JAWS. Practice reading and navigation commands in a Word doc. Use practical tasks that interest students or all of the above. And we did get another question in that we can answer while folks are filling out this poll. Okay. Any helpful suggestions to understand the difference between the PC cursor and the JAWS cursor? When to use it, what's the difference, et cetera? You know, that is a really tough one. All these different cursors in JAWS, we do actually have an archived webinar on our archived webinars, our webinars on demand page. Uh, I think it was called So Many Cursors, So Little Time. Um, in short, the PC cursor is the system cursor. It's the insertion point. It's the thing that moves in your document when you are navigating. The JAWS cursor simulates mouse activity. So it is used, we don't, we probably, I say we probably don't, I don't use it as much as I used to because more applications are accessible now. And also we have a lot of web applications where we're not using the JAWS cursor but you use the JAWS cursor to simulate a mouse. So you can move it to different areas of the screen. The PC cursor doesn't move and you can actually access things that, you know, may not be like, for example, within your document, they might be outside of that area, but still in the application window. So I'm not sure if I cleared that up for you, but you can go check that webinar out at our, our, our webinars on demand page. And we have demonstrations there of all those different cursors and how to use them. All right, um, a comment came in. I know how to use tasks like Word to start. I just need a list of commands to start with. So reading commands and navigation commands, I would love a list of Word specific commands that you would need. Okay, one thing too, um, and I should have mentioned this as well. One thing you can do that may help, and you can always send us send us an email to training at vispero.com and we'll help you get those commands. But one thing you can do in any application, you can press insert W, which is going to give you a list of um, Windows commands. And you're, they're going to come up in the virtual viewer so that you can just read your air or read them with your arrow keys. For example, open existing document, control O, I'm in Word, by the way, save a document, control S and so forth. And you can also press insert H as in hotel for hotkeys, for JAWS specific hotkeys in that application. And if there are some available, you will get a, a list that will come up in the virtual viewer. Same thing, um, things like say the current field, which is control insert numpad five, say the line and column of the, the carrot, which is, uh, anyway, so you can go through those, the, the carrot, your cursor. Um, you can just read all those commands and you can even copy them to a document from there. You can press control A to select all and control C and you can copy those to a document. So I just wanted to let you know that insert W is a list of Windows commands, insert H is, hot, is a JAWS specific hotkeys. All right, we're gonna go and review the poll question. We've just got about five minutes left in today's program. So I apologize to those of you who've submitted a question uh, that we might not get to. As Elizabeth said, you can always email training at Vispero uh, if you've got a, a follow-up question after this webinar. But let's take a look at this poll question. What are some ways to engage teaching students when teaching JAWS? Um, 
we had a, a, a variety of responses, but the majority at 96% said all of the above. So practice reading and navigation commands in a Word document and use practical tasks that interest students. And we'd love to hear other ways that you guys are working with um, students to engage beginners when teaching JAWS. Yeah, absolutely. What are you guys doing? Megan is asking if you have a mnemonic for memorizing key commands, which I think is kind of a, an interesting idea. That is an interesting idea. I personally do not. Um, I'll tell you one of the great things though about JAWS commands is that command search, you can press insert space, which will activate the command layer and then the letter J. And that brings up a search box where you could type in, for example, I can press insert space J, and I could type in the word say. So if I wanted to know the say line or say all. And then it's going to bring up all the different commands under a heading. So for example, it'll say say most recent notification. The next one might be uh, we have a lot of notification ones here. But say all, say line, things like that. So that's a great way to find a command and that's insert space followed by J, type in what you want to, to search for and then you can navigate with the letter H. There are just too many commands. Nobody, and I don't mean, I mean <laughs> literally nobody knows them all. Uh, we, you know, you, you will look them up routinely. It just is the way it is. There's just too many. Yeah, and you'll probably remember the ones you use the most and I found knowing how to find them is probably even more valuable than memorizing, you know, trying to memorize them all. Because again, you know, you have those tools at your fingertips. When you don't remember something, you can always search for it. All right, Paul, I'm going to let you take us out with a wrap up of our discoveries and our uh, sales slide. All right, uh, so Freedom Scientific definitely has a vast array of training resources pre-planned for teachers to integrate into the classroom. And JAWS basic training is available in DAISY format and can be found in the JAWS help menu and as a downloadable training bundle from the JAWS training page. Uh, real quick, wanna let you know that the annual licenses are available from APH. $90 gets you an annual JAWS license $80 will get you an annual Zoom text license. And just a couple of things uh, to reiterate, it's fundamental for students to begin working with JAWS in a Word document as they build their navigational skills. And specific training intended for teachers is available on the JAWS teachers page. And something else to just keep in mind, um, you may be working with adults, you may be working with, with children or students that are more advanced. I mean, there there is no one size fits all thing to, to do this. You know, you have to go by what does the student know, where did they come from, uh, you know, what kind of knowledge do they already have? Maybe there were already a user of a computer, and now they're they're losing their vision, and you have to teach them. So you, there just isn't a simple way for that, that works for everybody. There isn't a cookie cutter approach. As nice as that would be. Uh, you have to know your student and what their ability is and what they know. And so there's just so much to keep in mind here. Uh, that's why there's so many resources out there and they're, they're very helpful. I would definitely encourage you to take advantage of those. Thank you, Paul. All right, so thanks Elizabeth for being our presenter today. Uh, you're getting a lot of kudos in the chat from folks who are really appreciative of this webinar and the resources you've provided both in the PowerPoint and the handout that are located on our handouts page.